This is an introduction to English Grammar Part 16, Prepositions and Particles. My name is Karen, and this is for a course given at the University of Utah. The preposition is one of the main parts of speech. Prepositions precede nouns, and prepositional phrases are made up of prepositions and noun, noun phrases. Prepositional phrases can be called adjectival or adverbial, depending on what they modify. Phrasal verbs are made up of verbs and particles. Although particles look like present, prepositions, they behave quite differently. Okay, let's take a look at some prepositions. Here on this slide we have several underlying prepositions. Um, the preposition here is introducing a noun phrase. So the preposition precedes the noun phrase. So let's have dinner at my place. Okay, at is underlined followed by my place which is a noun phrase. If we look at the next one, the club met during the night. We have the club, which is the subject, met, which is the verb, during, which is a preposition, and then the night, another noun phrase. So again, the preposition comes right before the noun phrase, okay? As is the case with the rest of the sentences on this slide. A prepositional phrase is made up of a preposition and the noun phrase. So we take all of those things together to make up the prepositional phrase, okay? Uh, prepositional phrases can modify nouns and verbs. When they modify nouns, we call them adjectival, and when they modify verbs, we call them adverbial. Take a look at these sentences. These are sentences that have come from your textbook, and the first thing is to identify the preposition in the sentence and the prepositional phrase, and then the second task is to decide whether it is adjectival or adverbial. If you take a look at the first sentence, we have the ashes blew into her eyes. The ashes is the subject, Blue is the verb, and then we have a preposition into, and then her eyes, the noun phrase. So the whole prepositional phrase is into her eyes, and this modifies or gives us more information about how the verb happened or how the ashes blew. So it has, gives us information about the verb, which means that it's an adverbial um, prepositional phrase. Okay, go ahead and finish the rest of the sentences. The answers are on the next slide, so go ahead and pause the video and then continue when you're ready. If you take a look at this slide, you can see whether they are adverbial, adverbial or adjectival based on the color that they're underlined in. So the whole prepositional phrase is underlined and then the color indicates whether they're adjectival or adverbial. Okay, so if we look at number three, the people in, the, in this neighborhood are friendly. We have the subject, the people in this neighborhood, or the people, and we have the verb are, in this case, it looks like it's a linking verb, linking the subject, the people, with its complement, friendly. And then we have the prepositional phrase inside of the subject in this neighborhood, within being the preposition and this neighborhood being the noun phrase that comes after it. Particles and phrasal verbs um, is probably one of the more difficult parts of the prepositional phrase or understanding prepositions. Uh, for our purposes, this is probably the most difficult part for our exams. Phrasal verbs are verb-like things that are generally made up of what looks like two or three words. The first word is called a verb and the other words are called particles. Um, there's some disagreement about how we maybe store these things in our um, semantic map in our brains and so often we call these things as phrasal verbs because it seems like we maybe store them as just one thing even though they're made up of more than one word. So here are some examples. Get up as in to leave bed or a chair. Set up to make arrangements. Take off to remove or leave. Okay. Keep up with, to stay level with a person, to get along with, or deal with a person. Uh, deal with would also be a phrasal verb. Okay. Some other examples that I think of, I think of things like um, shutting down the computer, uh, turning on a light, turning off a light. Um, those things all seem to be just one kind of action where you have to keep the things together. Okay. Let's see how the particles operate. So the particles look like prepositions, but they have different behavior than general prepositions. For example, they're not always followed by noun phrases. So that's the first difference. If we look at sentence number one, Sally sang in, it's marked with an asterisk because that is an ungrammatical sentence. In fact, that should have alerted your mental grammar to something that was ungrammatical about it. Okay, the second sentence, Sally sang in the shower, um, has in the preposition followed by the noun phrase. That sentence your brain should accept as grammatical and prescriptivists agree. 
If we look at how a phrasal verb works, we can actually leave it without the noun phrase. So Sally gave up. Okay. We also could say Sally gave up the book to another person. Um, and so we can add a noun phrase, but we don't have to. It can stand by itself. Okay. In addition, particles have a different phonological behavior often. Prepositions are usually unstressed, but particles are sometimes stressed. Let's take a look at how they move. Okay. For me, this is the biggest indicator whether something is a preposition or a particle. Particles often move depending on whether their verb has a direct object. This movement is called particle movement. In our book, it talks about these as being deferred prepositions. So prepositions that can move to the end or can defer until the end of the sentence. Okay. So here is an example. John turned down the offer. Okay, so John turned down the offer. Down is the thing that looks like a preposition, um, but let's see what it can do. John turned the offer down. So in this case, when it's a particle and not a preposition, it can actually move to the end of the sentence. Okay, one thing though that we've learned about this is that we can't seem to keep it, um, we can't seem to keep it together when it ends with a pronoun. So I can't say John turned down it. We have to instead say John turned it down. So it seems that we actually use the deferred position whenever we end the sentence and the direct object is a, is a pronoun. However, some particles are difficult to move away from their verbs. If you take a look at these sentences, um, I've never come across that essay before. We've just seen that we can move uh, the pro the, when it uses a pronoun in place of the direct object. We can move the pronoun to in between the verb and its particle, um, but when we try to do that with some verbs, it doesn't work. So I've never come it across before is ungrammatical. Okay, um, I've never come across it before. Seems like we can keep it together there and keep it at the end. Okay, I'm looking for the man with a large belt buckle. I'm looking him for mm, ungrammatical. I'm looking for him. Here are a list of verbs where prepositions cannot be separated, okay? About, across, against, ahead of, at, by, behind, for. And then here's a list of phrasal verbs that seem to be able to be separated. So we would talk about that again as when they're able to be separated as a particle. So aside, away, back, over, up, down, in, out, on, off. Uh, one way that I like to think about the particle versus preposition is to think about whether it's actually doing the um, action that it gives us. So here's an example. Um, if I say she turned me down or he turned me down, um, that has some sort of meaning of uh, didn't want to go out with me, maybe on a date, maybe out for lunch, maybe even for a job. But if I instead change that to say um, he turned down the street, it has the meaning of down being a, a direction. So when it's a directional, it's a preposition, but when it's not directional, often it's a phrasal verb or a particle. Okay. Um, we've already talked about how prescriptivists don't like us to end sentences with prepositions. It gets really tricky when we're actually ending them with a particle, and those seem to be acceptable by um, prescriptivists. However, many people don't know the difference between particle and preposition, and so might correct that as an, in, as an incorrect uh, prescriptive rule. Okay? Other than what we've already discussed about leaving those prepositions at the end, prescriptivists really don't have too much to say about the preposition. Okay? What, you, what you've learned today is that you can recognize that prepositions and particles are different and have different behavior. That will be important for our exam. Remember that particles can move, so the first test is to try to move it, and prepositions have to do with directionality. Okay? Particles can often move away from their verb.